Uh, hi, I'm Mike Dano, uh, editor here at Light Reading, and I'm sitting here with Steven Stokels, uh, who is in charge of the Boost Mobile brand for uh, Dish Network. And uh, Steven, thanks so much for joining me today. I appreciate it. Um, so uh, you waited until the big 5G show started to drop a little bit of MVNO news. I know it was coordinated, uh, but uh, so, so you've got another MVNO under your belt. You guys announced uh, the acquisition of, of Gen, Gen Mobile. Yep. Uh, so I, I guess, uh, how many how many MVNOs is this that you have acquired uh, during your time uh, uh, overseeing Boost so far? Well, during my time, it's only two: okay. Republic and Gen Mobile. Okay. In aggregate, it's three if you add Ting to it. Okay. Which is and more of a plus technology. there's Boost also. And, and Boost, if you want to count that if as well. If you want to count that as well, right, so that's so. like that's a pretty good number of MVNOs that yep. that you've uh, uh, that you've been aggregating. Not a lot of MVNOs left out there, so. <laughs> I suppose that's true. I mean, so, uh, I mean, just in terms of like corporate strategy, uh, should we expect more MVNOs to come under the umbrella? Like, is that is that uh, an open strategy going forward? Well, I, I think we're open to it. It's not a deliberate, we're going out and trying to buy MVNOs as part of the core strategy, but we're like, we're opportunistic about it. And so the Gen Mobile deal, very opportunistic. And it comes at a time when three weeks ago, the U.S. government announced 14.1 billion in the infrastructure bill going to EBB. Right. Uh, and these guys, their bread and butter is sort of the lower income EBB, ETC, uh, and sort of urban market. So it's perfect. We want to expand and play on that. Gen Mobile's got expertise. They got a foundation. They got distribution there. Uh, and so timing on that's perfect. Uh, but again, from an MVNO acquisition perspective, look, we're opportunistic. Um, a lot of MVNOs are struggling. We'll look at them. We've looked at a lot and haven't pulled the trigger on a lot. So we, we've, okay. we've, bought, we've looked and said no to a lot more than we've actually said yes to. I see. Um, but ultimately, we're open to it. Okay. And, and the purpose of this particular acquisition really is that sort of federal funding, subsidized uh, internet, and making sure that Boost or Dish's uh, M, uh, brands will be able to take advantage of that kind of government subsidies. That's right. I mean, look, Boost is trying to move up market. Boost is trying to like become a, a you know more, much more of a household name. Okay. And you'll start to see us really attack the value-centric market uh, in postpaid as well now, not just prepaid. Uh, and so. Gen Mobile is a nice sort of brand that allows us to kind of sit on a street corner and, and sell uh, EVB or whatever it might be, or go after that $10, $15 ARPU subscriber, uh, lower income, and help us really bridge the digital divide while taking boost into a broader market and still not ignoring the low end, uh, the low end of the market. Gotcha, okay. Um, and so, uh, uh, you know, What's what, what's the next thing that we can expect from you know this umbrella of brands? Is it because you've talked before about the the postpaid offering that that may be coming from uh, a, a brand, maybe uh, related to the Boost brand? I mean, is that is that the next thing we should expect, or you know, kind of what what's in the rest of your sort of year plan? Yeah. So when it comes to brand, like l l let's be clear, we're not trying to be a uh, brand management shop. Right? Okay. We, we got it. There's a few brands, and we're not trying to be jack all trades, master of none. I think the, the, the brands that we've we've got to date, and you'll see Republic kind of relaunch and go after a specific segment, okay. uh, probably in end of Q4, early Q1. Uh, but you can see it's going to be very sort of deliberate. Uh, so we're not just looking to kind of manage different brands. Each one's kind of going after a segment. Boost being the one that's going to kind of go after the, the more mass market. Uh, and to the postpaid point, we've talked about it, I think, historically. We're trying not to kind of reveal too much too early. But at the end of the day, you know, there will be a Postpaid play, uh, okay. it'll be, it'll have disruptive elements to it. We're not looking to just come in and offer five bucks a month cheaper on unlimited, uh, and it'll likely sort of be associated with the Boost brand in some way, in the sense that Boost has a lot of brand equity. We want to kind of move that brand forward. We don't want to sort of ignore it, so it'll be some extension of that brand, most likely. Okay. Okay, um, and uh, I guess the last question about this latest acquisition. So, you know, one of the longtime programs of government funding is Lifeline, um, but I don't think that Boost does any Lifeline. Any plans to support Lifeline or any thoughts about Lifeline, which is the sort of longtime government program for subsidized yeah. uh, internet? I, I do know what it is. Okay. But yeah. Some of the yeah. audience may for, not. For some, for yes. some who, who may not. Yeah. It's, um, it's a very obscure program, and so I have only learned about it right. recently. So I think the, it's a good question though, because uh, the, the EBB, so there's a federal emergency broadband program now, uh, really meant to, to, at a federal level, address the digital divide. Mm -hmm. And what that's done is it's kind of made the ETC program, the Lifeline programs, a little bit obsolete. Um, they pay more, they pay. So under Pi and the Trump administration, ETC was kind of throttled and suppressed. 
uh, to a point where people couldn't make money on it. Um, and so you saw outside of California, it really kind of dwindled away. Okay. California had its own state funded program where people could make money. EBB's come along. Initially, there was three billion allocated to it. It actually pays 50 bucks a month where people can actually uh, make it profitable. Still a stretch, but you can make it profitable. Uh, and now EBB just got another 14.1 million ear earmarked. Okay. So EBB really is kind of supplanted ETC or, or the Lifeline programs at the state level. It's one federal piece. You don't have to go state by state. So when you look at kind of Boost, Boost is already playing in EBB. Um, a lot of our sort of uh, locations and stores are in areas where there's a high qualification uh, ratio. And so we're already started to plan it for the last couple of months. Today's acquisition news actually puts us in a much more uh, strong foundation to really go aggressive after that space. Uh, and so we will plan it. And you know, we're actually, you know, from a Lifeline perspective, ETC, we'll do that as well. That's just going to be a small piece. Uh, and I think that's more broadly speaking. Lifeline becomes sort of a, a stepsister to EBB, hmm. uh, given the economics. Okay, okay, sounds good. Um, and so, uh, last question is that, so uh, during, your, during your sort of tenure here at Boost so far, you've gotten a couple of different programs that are up and running. There's the, um, there's the healthcare offering that you guys launched, and there's a couple of other ones that are sort of innovative like that. Um, any indication of sort of traction on any of those plans or like, what are you seeing in terms of uh, you know the the overall uh, activity among no. Boost customers? Anything that's really caught on, or anything that's not catching on that you've noticed so far? So look, uh, I can't again share too much at this, point, but what I will say is we just launched the uh, access to a doctor. So Boost customers in our premium unlimited plan get free access to a live doctor 24/7. Okay. Uh, and so that actually has been live in the market for a little under two months now. Uh, and what we're seeing is significant, you know, so I can't share specifics, but what I will say is there is a step change shift to those taking the premium plan uh, ah. over the base plan. So I, at this point, too early to kind of claim massive victory, but I'll say it, it looks good from the perspective that like customers actually want that, they're willing to kind of upgrade to a premium plan in order to get that free access to a doctor. So that seems to be playing pretty well. Um, there's some other stuff we've launched, uh, but what I will say more importantly is Q4. Uh, there's some other big sort of moves we'll be looking to make on the heels of the success of, of, of the access to a doctor play, uh, which sort of validated some of the stuff we're doing. So we're gonna kind of expand a little more and you'll see us doing some moves that aren't maybe typical of a wireless carrier, hmm. but very sort of uh, valuable to the customer. Gotcha, so stay tuned. Stay tuned. Stay tuned, all right. Steven, I think that's all I got for you. Thanks so much for your time today, really no. appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, great, appreciate having me. Alrighty.